Welcome to Mass. Today we exalt the cross of Christ. So what exactly is the point of this day? First, it commemorates some important historical moments in the history of the Church, including the discovery of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem. It also commemorates the building of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher on that site nine years later. Today's scripture readings are meant to help us focus on the role of the Holy Cross in our life. When Paul writes, even death on a cross, he reminds folks that the cross was a form of execution for the powerless, slaves, rebels, and traitors of the Roman Empire. It wasn't exalted, but God exalted Jesus through it. This is why we venerate the cross. Our opening hymn is number 885 in the red hymnal. Lift high the cross, number 885. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. So good to see all of you students. It's my first time back to NDA this year. I'm Father Paul from just down the street at St. Gabriel's. And what a great feast to be together at Mass at today, the exaltation of the cross. And so let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, grant, we pray, that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. With their patience worn out from the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people sapphire servant, serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a sapphire and mount it on a pole. If any who have been bitten look at it, they will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anybody who had been bitten by the serpent looked at looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 76 in the blue gather. Forever I will sing, number 76.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, through he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking from of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even on a cross. Because of this, greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a great feast day today, and it's kind of a complicated feast because we remember a few different things. In the first reading, we heard about how the Israelites were in the desert and they complained against God, and God sent seraph serpents, which are poisonous snakes, to bite some of them so that they died, to teach the people that they shouldn't complain, but that they should trust in God. And God had Moses make a bronze something and he put it on a pole so that if the people looked at that bronze something, they would not die if they were bitten by a snake. Anyone remember what the bronze thing they put on the pole was? Yes. A serpent, exactly. So they were being bitten by snakes and God said make a bronze snake and put it on a pole and if the people look on that, then they will not die. And then in the gospel, Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole, So I have to be lifted up and everyone who looks at me will be saved. Not everyone who looks at me like with their eyes, but he says, everyone, what does he exactly say? He says, everyone who believes in me, everyone who believes in the Son of Man will have eternal life. God is an artist. And if you have like a favorite artist, artists often have special techniques that they always do. So maybe they sign their name like a special way in the corner of a painting. Or maybe they always like paint themselves as like a little figure in the background of a painting that they do. Or if you like, where's Waldo? They always hide a little Waldo somewhere on the page, but you have to look for it really hard if you want to find it. God is an artist, but God is the best artist. And so when he does something in artwork, it's the best. And because God is God, he doesn't do his artwork on paper with crayons. God does his artwork in the world with history and people and things. And so, thousands of years ago when the Israelites were wandering through the desert, God thought, I'm going to hide a cool little sign in what I'm doing with the people of Israel by having this thing raised up on a pole so that it would save people who look at it. And then a couple thousand years after that, I'm going to have my own son raised on a pole so that everyone who looks at it will be saved. God is an artist. And it's not a coincidence 
that Jesus was put on a tree or on a cross because a cross is made of wood. And where does wood come from? I already said it. <laughs> where does wood come from? You can just say it. Trees, exactly. Now, if we think back to the beginning of creation when God made Adam and Eve, God made a bunch of trees and he put them in the garden with Adam and Eve. But there was one particular tree that God gave them special instructions about and said, don't eat it or you're going to start screaming like a little baby. Wait a second. Oh, that was a little bit. Okay. He said, don't eat it or you will die. Anyone remember what the name of that tree was in the Garden of Eden that God said, you can't eat of it or you'll die? Yes. Do you remember it? Were you, did you want to raise your hand and guess? Not so sure. Yes, in, yes, you with the mask, yep. The tree of knowledge, yep, you got like half of the right answer. It's the tree of the knowledge of, yep, in the back, good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Very good. I see we've got some smart students here today. So, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat of it, you shall surely die. So God is an artist, and he knew that there is going to be this tree. We don't know if it was a literal tree or not, but the Bible presents it as a literal tree, so there is going to be this tree, and the first human beings ever were going to disobey God by eating the fruit of the tree, and they were going to be cursed because of that. They were actually going to become slaves of Satan. That's what happened when they ate the fruit of the tree. That's what Jesus came to fix when he died on the cross. So, Satan tricked the first human beings by getting them to eat of the fruit of a tree, and God sent his only son to fix that by dying on a tree. Everybody see the cool connection between those two things? We got trees, and because God is an artist, it's not just an accident. God did that intentionally. And in a second, when we get a little bit further in Mass, I'm going to sing the words of the preface, which is like, you know, lift up your hearts, and right after that, there's this cool line which says, basically, you defeated Satan on a tree, just like he defeated Adam and Eve on a tree, because God has a poetic sense of justice, which is really cool. So, I think today's feast is really cool because all of that basically just means that the focus of our faith, as we know, is on a particular person who lived at a particular time and died on a particular tree. And the name of that person is... Jesus, that's right. Jesus is the focus of our faith. And as we sort of still are in the first weeks of the school year, all of us at Mass today can ask Jesus to help us keep our eyes fixed on him on the cross, and not even just literally looking at him on the cross, but even throughout the day, keeping in mind that the main goal in life is to love Jesus, to do the will of Jesus, and to share Jesus with other people. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Let us now continue with the prayers of the faithful. Please stand. Let us ask God to hear our prayers through the cross of Jesus. For our holy Catholic Church, for Francis our Pope, Bishop Hebda, and for all bishops, priests and deacons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, we ask you to bless Father John and Father Paul, who lead us e each week in our school masses. We give thanks for the many ways in which they help us to know you. Bless them and their dedication to our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those suffering from floods, droughts, or wars, that they be delivered from present danger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders around the world, that they may find ways to bring an end to war and violence and promote peace and development for all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for all those who have died that they would rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. 
and also for the 70 times seven sisters, which is the intention of this mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Help us always to keep him as the center of our life and to love him, obey him, and share him. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our preparation hymn is number 884 in the Red Hymnal. We glory in the cross, number 884. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offense of the whole world, cleanse us, we pray, of all our sins, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you placed the salvation of the human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death arose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 501 in the Blue Gather. We have been told, number 501.
let us pray. Having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you, Lord Jesus Christ, to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross to the glory of the resurrection, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Just a couple quick announcements. Uh, first of all, students, please stay in the church after Mass because there will be uh, some important stuff going on right afterwards. And then um, it is great to see all of you and some of the young ones have gotten a little older and are already made their first communion now, so it's fun to see you coming uh, up forward for, first, for your communions. It's very good. And uh, looking forward to yeah, being with you. I think I have the next like three masses in a row after this one. So like, I've got you for a month. So if you like that, then congratulations. If you don't, well, you're stuck with me anyway. So um, and uh, yeah, what a beautiful feast to, to celebrate the cross of Jesus and to be with you all. So let's see, did I have one other thing to say? Oh yeah, for receiving communion, like many of you have did like very well remembering to put like one hand over the other and to keep them flat and to not like grab until like I moved my hand away. So very good job with that. I did see a few people who like did this thing where it's like two hands next to each other. Everybody put two hands next to each other like this. Okay, now go mm mm. Okay, now put your hands apart again. Now put, oh, if you're right handed, put your right hand underneath your left hand. If you're left-handed, put your left hand underneath your right hand, okay? Either way, and you keep it flat like that, and imagine I put the host there, I leave, and then your bottom hand goes like that. Very good. You can stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 575 in the Blue Gather, For the Life of the World, number 575.